We've been looking quite a lot at value types and reference types recently and how they live on the heap or on the stack and so forth. And there's just a few more things we need to look at in those terms. And what I wanted to look at now was the keywords ref and out. And I'm actually going to divide this into two parts because today I'm going to look at the usage of ref and out that has been around in C-sharp since the very beginning. And then in the next video, I was going to look at what came in in C-sharp 7, which is the idea of returning by reference. So we're going to look at the basics this time. And what I've got here is just a program with very little in it so far. And we're going to look at this idea of passing parameters using ref and out. And the basic idea is pretty simple. If I were to just put in a function here, so let's just call it change int, and take some int that we'll just call x, and then if we print out the value of x, and then we say x plus plus, and then we print out the value of x again. Obviously enough, what's going to happen? If then in this passing, I'll create a int y and set its value to 10, and then I'll call change int passing in y. And then if I print out the value of y after all that, as you probably expect, we know it's going to happen. We see x started out as 10, increased to 11, but the point is y remained at the original 10. The reason being that when we have a value type like int, we pass that in and x is a copy of y, so anything we subsequently do to x is not going to affect y. But we can change that pretty simply because if I put the keyword ref on there, I'm now saying that even though this is a value type, pass it by reference. And you'll notice that's not changed anything in that change int function, but it has changed what's going on here. Because C sharp insists that when you have a function that declares a parameter with the keyword ref, you've also got to call it with the keyword ref in the equivalent position. And that's not an absolute necessity in terms of how programming works, but it's a useful rule because it means that here, we can see what is going on. And if I just show you what's going on, we can now see that we have changed the value of y when we change the value of x. So y is now also 11. And in C++, we had a very similar idea to this with passing by reference. But in that language, you don't need to say anything on the calling side. And it means looking at that code it would be impossible just by looking there to tell whether y is potentially going to be changed by this if we're passing by reference or is going to be guaranteed to be unchanged if we're passing by value. And so that's why quite a lot of C++ programmers will always put a comment in there, but in C Sharp we have to put the word ref corresponding in there. And so that's all that's happening. It just means that now x is a reference, but unlike the references we've already seen, it's a reference to an object on the stack rather than an object on the heap. The other related keyword we have, and actually used rather more, is the out keyword. So we can change that ref to out, and again have to do it in both places. Now first thing to mention about out, it's not the same usage of the keyword as we have when we're talking about covariant assignment with generics, which we looked at in an earlier video. It's just reuse of the keyword, but completely unrelated. But all out does that's different from ref is it assumes that x, in this case, may be uninitialized. So we have rules in C sharp generally. If I do an int z and leave it uninitialized, then the compiler can keep track of that. And if I were to try and say put z into y, because z is uninitialized, we get the error there used for an unassigned local variable. And we need to pull this through with this idea of out and ref. And basically, if we say ref int x, then that insists that x must have an initial value, and therefore we're able to write it out and also increment it. But if we put out int x, we are saying that x may not be initialized, which means we can't do anything to it before we've given it a value. So we can't display it 
And indeed, we can't do x plus plus on it because plus plus assumes it's got an initial value. So instead, we can do something like equals 27. We can assign into it, and now it's not an unassigned variable. And what that means is that although we could pass in y there, so int y equals 10, we can also leave y uninitialized there, and then when we run that, we'll get y changed to 27. So it's purely about the rules of initialization. That's the only difference between ref and out. Both of them mean that x is a reference to y on the stack. And in fact, you might want to think of ref, and some other languages term it like this, as in out. So with a ref parameter, there's a value being passed in and a value coming out, but with an out parameter, nothing being passed in, so it doesn't need to be initialized, and then the value coming out. And the classic situation where we use out is actually when we are parsing numbers. So suppose I do something like this. Suppose I say string as stra equals, and then let's just do a console dot read line. And I'm going to enter a number, but enter it as a string. And one way we can get that to a number is we could say something like int as num equals and then int dot parse as struct. And then we could just display the number or do something with it. So let's just display it in this case. Okay. And so if we run that and I type in 23, then it turns into a number and reads it. But the problem with that is if I type in some text, it's not clever enough to parse that and we get an exception, which we could have caught, but in fact, the more normal way that we deal with this is we have this thing called try parse. And so try parse returns a Boolean. So we can say if and then try parse. But the problem now is because it's used the Boolean as the return value, we now need an alternative way of getting the number out if the parse is successful. And so the way we could do it is I could now say int as num. I can leave that uninitialized. And then as the second parameter, we have this out parameter. So I can say out as num. And then we can see that if it's returned true, then it's worked. Otherwise, we could do something like not a number. So there, clearly, we need to assign a value into that as num inside the try parse, and it comes out looking like that. And because it's out, we don't need to initialize it. So now, if I type the number, we get that working correctly. And if I type the text, then it just happily tells us that it's not a number. That code, actually, is the kind of way you'd have written this sort of thing right back in C Sharp version one. There's a few features that have been introduced to make that a bit easier in more recent versions. One is, it's a bit ugly just to have that declaration hanging about on its own without any value and then being used in here. So what we can do is we can actually declare it at the same point that we get the value out of try parts. So we can say out int and declare it, or even we can say out var, and allow it to just work out the type based on the context. Both of those will do the same thing. And so we can see that's just a little bit tidier rather than declaring it separately. The other thing we can do is if you had a situation like this, if you just wanted to check whether it was a number or not, but don't actually care about what the numerical value is, you can see that's a bit of a waste because we've got this as num and then we're never using it. But it's got to be there. You can't miss that off entirely because the method takes two parameters. And so this is where we can use a thing called a discard, just an underscore, which basically is saying, yeah, I understand that that's going to give us something back. So I've got to put that in for completeness, but I'm not interested in it. So we just use the underscore as the discard just to put the place in there. And so now I can just type in 20 is a number for 20 not a number. Now it has to be said that if this were being designed today, the way they might well have done it would be for int.tryparse to return a nullable int. So we've got nullable value types in C sharp, and so we could have simply indicated failure by returning null, 
and success by returning the value that we have, which is what you'd normally do with reference types. The reason it's like this is historical. We didn't have nullable value types in version one of C sharp, and so that's why it's like this. But if you were writing similar code for yourself, you might go with the out approach for consistency, but um, also just think about the fact you could return a nullable value type. One last thing to mention that we've got here is the fact that actually we can also pass reference types by reference. So, so far, we've been talking about it for value types, which is probably the primary use, but we can also do it on a reference. So if we just look at what I've got here, I've got actually in this point, we have both a point C, which is a class, and a point S, which is a struct. But apart from that, they're exactly the same. So I'm going to use this reference type. And so what I can obviously do, if I put in here a function called change point, I can pass a point in there, point C, the reference type, and then I could say something like p dot x plus plus. And then if I create in here a point, and let's call this my point, and just give that some values. And then if we pass that in, pass that in and then print it out, then obviously because p is a reference to my point, then when we change p.x, we're changing my point.x, and so we'll see that coming out as 6,5. But something that doesn't necessarily work as you expected it, if in here we said p equals new point c, x equals 100, y equals 100, then in that case, it doesn't change my point at all. That remains at 5, 5, because p itself is a local variable inside change point, and by putting a new point c in there, we're not having any effect on the point c that we created here. Whereas if we change that to a reference, so put ref in there, and therefore put ref in there, now, P is a reference to my point, and therefore changing what's actually in P, rather than changing the thing referred to by P, has the effect on the my point. So now we'll see that we do get 100, 100. And in fact, a place that that is used in practice is in a dictionary. So if I do something like this, if I declare a dictionary, and let's just make this a dictionary keyed on a string. And then if we populate that, so let's do a point dict dot add top left and then new point C, x equals minus 5, y equals minus 5, and then do another one, bottom right, and then make those just positive. And then something that we need to be careful of is when you look something up in a dictionary, if we say something like console write and then maybe point dict and then put in something that's not in there, like bottom left, then if it's not in there, you get an exception because you're looking for something that's not in there. And so what we can do is do a safety check. We can do an if point dict dot contains key, and then you can check for the particular item, and then only look it up once you've verified it in there. So it's not found, so that 
doesn't throw an exception. But that's a bit clunky because we're basically going to have to look that up twice. If you remember the video we looked at on hashing, where we're looking at how this works, we saw that that was coming out twice. And so what we've also got is this. We can simply say point dict, and then we've got this try get value. And that is very similar to the try parse that we had um, on an int, in that we can put in the string, so the key, so we went for bottom left, but then as an out parameter, we can have the value. So we can say out point C, let's call that val, and then this whole thing returns a boolean. And so we can display what we've got there. So it does the test and the return in one go, which is neat to code and is also going to be more efficient. So if we go for bottom left, we get nothing. And if we go for, say, bottom right, then we get the value. And that's using the fact that point C, remember, is a reference type. So it's just showing practical use of doing this on reference types, as well as what we've already seen of doing it on value types. So that's something that's been around since version one of C Sharp, the idea of out and ref. And it's not something you want to use too much, but it can get you out of a bit of a bind in a lot of these sorts of situations. Next time, we're going to be looking at the new use of the keyword ref in terms of return types. But I hope that was helpful. If you enjoyed it, do click the like button, do subscribe, and I'll see you next time.